clicked on this video, you're here to see this thing get done. And that is the plan for today. Welcome to Grease Garage. Let's get this supercharger winding. So the first issue we have here is the intercooler piping didn't really make it. So we could cut here, bring it out, cut here, join it across, but it's too much hard work. So what I'm going to do is going to cut right here on that 45 and extend it out, which is going to bring it out higher and closer. And obviously that's going to stop the bumper from hitting as well when we put it back on. So that's where we're at and that's where we're going to start doing it. Now that we got both sides done, uh, pretty simple, we just gotta measure up and just cut these little pieces in here and start welding them up. Done both sides and yeah, as you can see, got it sitting on the intercooler side, got it sitting there and that's how we're gonna get a gap. You can use tape measure or vernier, it doesn't really matter. And also remember that you're always gonna have a bit of play with garlic, so it's close enough as you can get, so we're looking at about 62-63. So, now that I got that figured out, let's chop these and then start welding them in. Now that that's all chopped up, we just gotta slide these in, get them roughly right, which I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. You wanna try and get as much gaps out of these joints as possible. And then we just stick on some blue tape when we're happy where they are, and then start tack welding. Okay, so what we're doing is we've got the belt already around the alternator and we're just going to go around the supercharge, make sure that it's in nice and snug. And then we're going to go around the crank, the home light balancer, and this is where it gets a bit tight. So I'll make sure she's... Alright, All right, let me prime that fuel pump. Go, hit it. Ah. She's winding! Oh man. So loud. So loud. All right, now that we've got that going, we just got to hook all the uh, clamps and stuff up and then it's time to start playing with the map. 
So cool. So as you can see, we're in the car, the supercharger is connected, it's making all the right noises, but we need to now tune it. Now, I don't know if many of you have seen Ben's bought perfectly fine wiring harness that he got of, uh, of a mate, but it's absolute chicken shit. So it's something that we really, really, really need to fix. Um, but that's all right. So he's running an Adaptronic M2000, great ECU. So that's what we've got up here on the laptop. And right now we're looking at his fuel map. A couple of things you've probably will know straight away is that the loading is in KPA and then we've got the RPM across. So what we need to do when you actually get a car that has boost, we need to extend this up. So at static pressure is 14.7 PSI on our bodies at sea level. So that's what that is. And then if we want to add boost, we have to add boost on top of that. So that's what we're going to do first. Now we know the supercharger isn't going to be making crazy amounts of boost, but it's always a good idea to add slightly higher pressure loads than necessary. This allows for boost spikes or in our case, because of not knowing what the actual boost pressure is going to be, seems the pulley size was based off a less efficient motor of the same size. As you can see, the 0 to 100 kPa is atmospheric pressure in the manifold, 101 kPa normally being wide open throttle on a naturally aspirated car. And above 101 kPa to 220 kPa is in the positive pressure. 200 kPa of absolute pressure is 17.2 psi gauge pressure, just in case you were wondering. This map that I'm alterating is the target air fuel ratio map and is quite helpful when dialing in your air fuel ratios on the dyno or on the road. The rows that I'm changing have to be done to the ignition and fuel maps as well. Okay, so we're down at the dyno. The car is finally on. We've uh, already gone and done a couple of runs and it's definitely an improvement, but Ben's car, because it's missing all the time, it's causing us issues. So I'm about to take the manifold off chuck some different injectors in and I go from there. But one thing we do have to change already and that is the blower valve. The blower valve is too small and it is ear piercing. If I get a chance, I'll record it because man, whew, it's so loud, too loud. It's an obnoxious, dumb. So we got a 50 mil blower valve on its way. But she's here, she's finally on the dyno guys. Which is a couple of teething problems before we get a power figure, and obviously we're going to record um, that as well. So, put in the comments section how much power do you reckon it's going to get? And remember, if you like what you're watching, please subscribe. It means a lot to me. It means we can keep doing this. Like, share to your mates. Thanks, guys.